Hello friends. So for today's video, we're going to be going through some short book recommendations. I've done a few videos like this for fantasy books specifically. So if you are a voracious fantasy reader and you're looking for more recommendations after this video, I'll have those linked. But I wanted for today to have a wide range of genres for a couple of different reasons. One, if you are somebody who reads more widely, then hopefully there will be something on this list that sounds appealing to you. But on the opposite end, if you're somebody that tends to stick to one genre and you're looking to branch out, I know for myself, I prefer to, if I'm going to dip my toes in another genre, find something that's not as intimidating and maybe is a little on the shorter side. So hopefully these recommendations, once again, will have something that sounds interesting to you. Jumping into it, we'll start with a cozy murder mystery, and that would be the maid. This follows a young woman named Molly who is a maid for this very fancy hotel and she absolutely loves her job. She takes it very seriously. She's very passionate about it, but a lot of the hotel staff sort of sees her as a little odd and you as the reader very quickly pick up on the fact that Molly is neurodivergent. She doesn't quite pick up on social cues the way you as the reader might or if you individually actually experience a lot of what Molly experiences then you might really relate to how she perceives the world, how she perceives social interactions. But regardless, Molly one day when she is doing her job and she's cleaning a room, she stumbles upon a dead body and law enforcement does not know whether this individual that she has found has died of natural causes or if it was actually a murder, but they are not ruling murder out of the equation and they are also not ruling Molly out of the equation when it comes to murder suspects. This is especially due to the fact that a lot of the hotel staff has deemed her as odd, as different, as strange, and Molly, you just can't help but feel for her and recognize like, no, Molly, it's just really sweet and she just loves her job. Beyond the murder mystery component, you also are diving a little bit into Molly's everyday life. At the very beginning of the story, you find out that her grandmother, who she was living with, has passed away. And so you actually dive a lot into what her upbringing was like and how she had this connection with her grandmother. And I actually was pretty emotional about some of the things that we dove into in regards to this familial bond. But then, the murder mystery is a little different than what you typically find because you as the reader are seeing things that Molly isn't quite seeing. And so you really are pulled in with this a little bit false sense of confidence because you think you know what's going on. And then there's some things that happen in the book that might take you by surprise. It's the kind of story where you could get to the end and not read the, the epilogue and think, oh, okay, that's the end. And then you read the epilogue and it almost turns it into a different story and it kind of makes you want to go back and read it again. So I had a lot of fun with this. I'm not somebody who reads a ton of cozy murder mystery, but I flew through this one. After that, we have a gothic fantasy and that would be the last tale of the flower bride. Gothic fantasy is becoming, I think, a little bit more common, but I still think that it's hard to determine exactly what it is because it leans into a lot of different subgenres. It feels a little bit like magical realism. It feels a little bit like horror. It feels a little bit like fantasy, fairy tale, folklore. And that is true of this one. It's kind of a hybrid of all of those things. You follow this young man who is married to this very mysterious woman. And when they got married, she asked him, don't ever please ask about my past. Can you do that? And he agreed, but her past comes knocking when they have to return to her family home and deal with the passing of a loved one. So everything that's transpiring, you're often wondering, is this really happening or is it not? And it is hard to determine whether or not this is magical realism and fantasy or if it's just all in their head, is it all in your head? And then I think some things are definitely up for interpretation. I definitely found that with the character relationships and the way they behave, that is not going to feel very relatable. It's not going to feel like real interactions between people because it's kind of more about the atmosphere that it's creating and they fit into that. So it really comes across more like a folklore, folktale type of story. I would say it's definitely much more about the aesthetic, the atmosphere, the setting, all that. And if you're somebody who likes a creepy setting where you're not quite sure what's happening, but maybe you don't 
want something that's too grotesque or too horrific, then this will fit the bill. After that, we have some contemporary romance. These are going to be a lot more happy, uplifting, fun, and I have a couple of different ones. I'll mention the Brown sisters. The first one, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, is about a young woman who has chronic pain, and so working and just in general everyday life can be pretty difficult for her, but she is determined to make the most of her life, and she makes this list about how she's going to get a life. And part of that involves her career, part of that involves trying new things, and part of that involves perhaps maybe getting to know some other people in a way that results in something romantic. We also have some Emily Henry, which I likely don't really have to even mention because I know a lot of people have heard of Emily Henry. She's everywhere, but I still felt it was worth mentioning because if you haven't tried Emily Henry before, maybe now would be a good time, especially with springtime coming. I just feel like there's just something kind of uplifting and happy about her works and same with Talia Hibberts as well. And I'm holding up book lovers, but you can try any of Emily Henry's books. So this particular one follows two individuals who are both within a similar career and they butt heads a little bit upon first meeting, but then the more they get to know each other, the more that the tension builds into something a little bit more romantic. However, one of them is very focused on helping their family and the other is very focused on their career. And so while their worlds are currently colliding, there is this question of whether or not there is anything for them in the future. After that, if you regularly watch my channel, you have to know that this is coming, and that would be Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. T. Kingfisher's works are in general very short. Nettle and Bone is specifically fantasy, but it feels a lot more like a grim fairy tale. It is adult fantasy, and we follow this young woman named Mara, whose sister has been married off to this royal individual from a very powerful country. They need this alliance for their own country. However, this man that her sister has married is abusive, and so Mara wants to find a way to rescue her sister to save her, but also not jeopardize the safety of their entire country. Their country does rely on this other man's military. So she's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, and she goes on this basically a little adventure and recruit some interesting individuals along the way to help her on her quest. I think that it is very amusing. At times it can be dark, at times it can be hilarious. It's also really weird. <laughs> and I personally really enjoyed the weirdness of this story, but it is very quirky. I do think that if you are looking for more of the gothic inspired stories, like something like The Last Tale of the Flower Bride, then you might wanna check out What Moves the Dead, which is also very short. That one is a retelling of the fall of the House of Usher. So you're gonna get more of the horror elements within that one. If you're looking for something that's just really fun and silly and cute, then I would recommend A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. I always compare this one to Shrek in its tone where there is definitely a lot of really, really silly humor that is probably going to really appeal to younger readers because it is a young adult middle grade age range story, but there's a lot of humor that I think adults will really enjoy as well. So in general, T. Kingfisher, definitely recommend if you're looking for a few different genres actually, but if you're looking for fantasy specific, then Nettle and Bone. Next up, we have a literary fiction and that would be White Noise by Don DeLillo. I actually found this book to be pretty hilarious. It is broken up into three parts, and the first part was my favorite, but there are different things about each of the parts for you to really dive into. Because it's literary fiction, I definitely think that what you see on the surface is not necessarily all there is to the story. There's so much to dive into, and there's so much that you can pick apart. But then also, if you just kind of want to read something a little absurd, but strangely very prevalent to day-to-day -day life, then you can get that same reading experience out of this. This is one of those books where rather than describe a particular plot, I feel like it makes more sense to describe the themes. One of the themes, as the title would give away, is white noise, the way that we are constantly entertaining ourselves or occupying our brain with nonsense and oftentimes graphic content that is somewhat morbid in nature, but then when it comes to important things, we don't really care. And so there's a lot about our fascination with things like car crashes and natural disasters and things like that, so long as those things aren't affecting you. But then when those things do affect you, how do you respond? How do you behave? There's also some themes in the latter half of the book, or actually the last third, I would say, 
and a little bit sprinkled in throughout that dive into a fear of death. That was actually the theme that I didn't love as much, which is why I liked the beginning of this so much more. It's very odd. It's very quirky. Also, if you have seen that there is an adaptation of White Noise, yes, that is the book that it is based off of. However, I have seen a lot of people not really care for the movie. It would seem the movie kind of took some of the absurdism and tried to make it seem real, as opposed to just letting the people in the adaptation act absurd. So it seems like there was a little bit of a tonal difference, but if you're curious, that is the book that the adaptation is based on. Very different from that, next up we have a fantasy romance, and that would be The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This book is, it's a hug in a story. It is so sweet, it is so endearing and charming. We follow this young woman who is a witch within our own world, but witches are not known to actually exist, so she has to keep this secret. She also has lived a lot of her life somewhat in isolation. She doesn't really have that anchor of home, and so she feels sort of adrift. And she ends up accepting a job teaching three young orphans who are also witches how to control their magic. There's also a man who is kind of like their tutor in regular studies, not witch, witch studies. And he is very, very protective of all three of the orphans. And so he's very suspicious of this woman who's kind of come into the picture now. But of course, because it's a fantasy romance, eventually they get to know each other a little bit more. And it's just so cute. The story is adorable. There's a lot more to it than just a cute romance, which if you're looking for a cute romance, that's what this is. But I also think there is that additional layer of diving into the main characters, diving into the struggles of their lives, their fears, and things like that in ways that I think a lot of people are going to really connect with. Our main character is somebody who doesn't really have a place to call home, whereas the love interest is someone who has a home, has a family, but they are not necessarily loving and supportive. And so I think there are things about that that sadly a lot of people can relate to, but in seeing it in book form, it can be kind of cathartic and it can make you feel a lot less alone. I also just think the bond between our main character and the orphans is so sweet. They themselves are so precious. I cannot say enough good things about this. When I picked this up initially, I just was so happy. I was smiling while I was reading it. So if you need a good pick me up, if you need that warm hug of a book, this is the perfect one for that. If you're interested in checking any of these books out, I will have them linked in the description bar down below. If you have any of your own short book recommendations, feel free to leave those in the comment section. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.